Folks, we all know that one of the true joys of fighting games comes from the different types of characters that you have access to. There's lightning fast rushdown characters with insane combos. There's zoning characters who can fill the screen up with massive beams and projectiles. And then there are some characters who are just a little bit goofy. Just a little bit weird. Sometimes they even feel like they're not in the right game. They're not strong, they don't really have any crazy powers that make them top tier for tournaments. But I think joke characters like this can be a lot of fun. I think they add a lot to the game and it's always really enjoyable to beat up on your friends with a character who's kind of meant to be a joke. So today, we're going to be running through a list of some of my favorite joke characters from throughout fighting games. We're going to do kind of an alternating thing. We're going to alternate with characters that maybe you've heard of before that are pretty well known. Alternating with some characters that are a little more obscure and maybe you're going to see them for the first time. So let me know down in the comments. Is there anyone on the list who you had never heard of before who maybe you're surprised to see in an actual fighting game? And uh, hit like if you like the video. It really helps me out. But guys, before we get into it, I wanted to plug my Discord. My Discord has gone public for the first time. So if you want to join the Discord, all you got to do is click the link in the description, the top link right there down below. Uh, we used to have this locked just for Patreon supporters, and honestly, the main reason for that was just to keep the number of people manageable so we didn't have to deal with a bunch of bots and so our tournaments wouldn't take like 10 hours. Uh, we are going to keep the tournaments locked behind a paywall. We are going to have Discord Premium. You can sign up for that and that will get you into our tournaments. But if you just want to hang out and chat and, you know, use the matchmaking channels to find people to play with, uh, you can do that just by clicking the link and joining the Discord. And if you want to try out the tournaments like the JM Cup and the Fightcade Frenzy that we run every month, uh, there's actually a seven day trial of the Discord Premium that you can use to do that. I totally won't be upset if you use the seven day trial to play in a tournament and then never sign up for the full subscription ever again. That's totally fine if you just want to check it out. But I think you're going to have so much fun that you might want to stick around and be a part of the Premium Club. We're calling it the JM Combat Club. I would love to see you guys there. So click the link, join the Discord. That's it for the preamble, guys. Let's jump into the list. All right, let's start off here. Obviously, we can't have a list of joke characters without talking about Dan. Dan from Street Fighters, probably the most famous joke character of all time in fighting games. So if you guys don't know the story, the backstory of Dan, so Street Fighter 2 came out and it had Ryu and Ken, and then SNK released The Art of Fighting, which starred Robert and Ryo. And Robert and Ryo, they had a little bit of similarity to Ryu and Ken. You know, they have Fireball, they have the uppercut, they have, you know, like a forward moving kick attack to replace the hurricane kick of Ryu and Ken. So Capcom went and said, you're going to copy us with Ryo and Robert. Well, we're going to copy you. And they created Dan. So he's kind of got Ryo's outfit on with the, the karate gi with the black t-shirt under it. And then he's got the, uh, the ponytail of Robert from Art of Fighting. And his move list... You know, he's got a Shoto move list, he's got uh, a fireball, it just doesn't go very far. Uh, he's got an uppercut, and then of course he's got uh, the forward moving Dan kicks, as people call them. Here we're playing Dan in Street Fighter 4, which is maybe my favorite version of Dan. So a few things that he's got, he's got a normal taunt, like everyone else, everyone can taunt, but he's also got a crouching taunt. No other character in this game has a crouching taunt, it can actually hit the opponent as well you can't normally do in this game and he's even got a jumping taunt look at this my man can he, he can jump and taunt and it actually makes him float in the air a little bit longer so that's pretty fun and to top that all off he's also got a super taunt he can spend his full super meter to do an attack that does no damage it's funny, okay? It's funny. Even though it doesn't actually do anything, it's funny. But, you know, it actually kind of does do one thing. You know, normally, it's pretty hard for Dan to combo into his Ultra 1. It just doesn't work in a lot of situations where other characters' Ultras are going to work. But for whatever reason, his Super Taunt is actually Ultra Cancelable. So if you have the full... <laughs> four bars of super you can use that to cancel some of his special moves into super taunt into ultra and is there any better feeling than playing a joke character and doing something totally over the top and ridiculous and pointless to your opponent and still winning that's the best feeling in fighting games right there so dan had to be on the list and like I said, we're going to be alternating. We started out with a pretty well-known character, so let's go obscure. We're looking at Waku Waku 7. This is an arcade fighting game that's actually quite a lot of fun, and it has a very strange character 
over here named Bonus Coon. So, you know, Bonus Coon, just like Dan and Ryu and all those guys, he's a Shoto, okay? So he's got the fireball. I mean, can't you tell by the, the Ryu headband that this guy's gonna be a Shoto? Look, he's got the uppercut. I mean, this is my favorite. Look look at his hurricane kick, bro. So yeah, he he's a punching bag, quite literally. He's normally not playable in the arcade version of the game. You gotta play the Sega Saturn version. And uh, he can't do a lot of things that you are supposed to be able to do in the game. He can't crouch. So he's not really very viable because you can't even crouch block. You just get hit by lows. But check out the way that he runs. <laughs> Look, he can move so fast. My man's moving. And then my favorite part of the character is the super. So, you know, here's like his powered up fireball. His uh, powered up hurricane kick here. There we go. But he's got two supers here that are really powerful. And uh, photosensitivity, epilepsy warning. Skip the next 30 seconds if you're bothered by flashing lights. Here's one of his supers. Oh my god, my eyes. <laughs> you gotta press the button to get back up because it leaves him knocked down. And then here's the other. Warning, warning. <laughs> Straight up into the skies. And we come down like a missile, man. This guy's clearly powerful, even if he only has... He has four normal attacks. And then three special moves. That's all he has. He doesn't even have any combos. You can, like, link jab into jab, but... Yeah, no no way to, like, combo into special moves. At least that I know of. If we have any Waku Waku 7 scholars out there... Who can tell me the secret pro tips for using Bonus Coon. I would love to hear it, but... Right now, I'm just having fun. Laughing at the ridiculousness of playing as this punching bag. So that's bonus coon. All right, next up, we're moving over to some melty blood. And if you guys watch fighting games on YouTube, you've definitely seen Neko Arc, right? Neko Arc is like the ultimate meme. This character is such good clickbait because everyone wants to know what's going on with the weird meme cat. What's this cat doing here? So Neko Arc has some really crazy moves. You can see we got the, the fire breath. And then if we hold it, check out what happens. We got the... <laughs> The Shin Godzilla Fire Breath. Neko Arc also has this really sick auto combo. If you just hold forward plus A, she does this whole combo. I love that. We got the massive eye lasers, which we can hit confirm into super. That's kind of cool. Oh my god, all the tiny Neko Arcs. And then where the character gets really fun, in my opinion, is you can call in these assists. You can call in all these little buddies to come help you out. And these guys, all kinds of random crazy stuff is gonna happen. All the little Neko arcs, you can call in other characters from the game. They're gonna throw their attacks out here. But the real fun here, we gotta see if we can get the, the streamer install here. It's a very low chance of happening. I had to spam this move for a long time to get it to happen. But now you can see... Oh, I'm, I'm blocking it. I'm sorry. My own streamer face is blocking the streamer face. You get this streamer overlay and the chat up there at the top, they can interact with the game. Those, those random people are going to like throw power-ups in and affect the outcome of the match. So the, the streamer install is definitely uh, NekoArk's most formidable tool if you're actually lucky enough to land it. But yeah, the character is hilarious, a lot of fun to play, definitely not that strong, but if you are able to actually get some wins with NekoArk, uh, it's endlessly satisfying and hilarious, and it might get you a lot of views on YouTube if you're a content farmer like me. So that's Neko Arc, Melky, Melty Blood type Lumina is the game. All right, let's go back to something a little obscure once again. We're playing Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and it's got this character, Nori Morrow. I don't quite know what to think about this guy. So it's my understanding Nori Maro is based on a real Japanese comedian named Noritake Kinashi. And this is very much like the type of character who should not be fighting. He's just like this normal nerdy guy. He doesn't even seem like he knows any good moves. He just kind of shoves the opponent, headbutts them. He can throw stuff out of his satchel. Look, we've got, we've got this DP, but it's not... <laughs> Exactly, like, a super quality anti-air here. Okay, we've got- this is like Luigi, like, running A from Smash Melee? I don't know. And here we can- we can slip on a banana peel. We can throw out the banana peel and just hope that the enemies are gonna slip on it. In a game that has, like, literal, like, Marvel heroes and villains, 
I don't really think Noramaru is cutting it, but if we get desperate, you know, we can throw all kinds of objects from our satchel. We can power up, go for like his raging demon type attack. He's going to transform into all kinds of nonsense. I don't know. Maybe this guy's kind of cool. Maybe I'm coming around on Norimaru. And I'm pretty sure that he was never playable again. I'm pretty sure this guy never returned in another game. I think it's just Marvel Super Heroes versus Street Fighter and only in the Japanese version. Not in any other versions. Uh, so yeah, if you want to play as like one of the weirdest, dorkiest looking characters. I mean, can you believe that they put in all these animations for this character? That's the part that is so unbelievable to me. Like actual love and care and attention went into drawing all these sprites for this guy, which is really crazy for something that is really just like an elaborate joke. I feel like you don't see that that much in games these days where they'll put this much work into a character that is just like a meme. He's just a meme. I don't know. So I can't help but love Norimaru for just how ridiculous it is that he exists at all. And, you know, maybe we should have this guy come back. Maybe bring him back in Street Fighter 6, right, guys? Norimaru for Street Fighter 6. Anybody? Anybody want to see it? Just me? You know, while we're on the subject of Capcom versus games, we already showed uh, Roll. Roll is basically a joke character, I would say, but there's one other big one in this game, which is Servebot. Let's talk a little bit about Servebot. So Servebot is the smallest character in Marvel vs. Capcom, and it really is jarring. Seeing him next to a normal sized character, he is actually shockingly small, so he is really hard to hit. That's one of basically the two positive aspects that Servbot has going for him. He's hard to hit, and he has one good super. Kind of. See, here's the thing is that Servbot's super is determined by what assist you pick. He's actually the only character in the game that works like that. So the only way to get his good super is by picking balance type. That's actually going to be like his only somewhat useful super. So each, each different super does a different thing. I'll show you here. So balance type is going to do this sort of screen filling, you know, helicopter serve bot super. And this one's pretty good. You might be able to see it actually does more damage on block than it does on hit. So even when blocked, this super is going to do pretty good damage. So it's, it's somewhat useful for that reason. And then, yeah, he's got this lunch rush one. It doesn't do hardly any chip. I don't know why this one does like no chip damage on block and the other one does so much. And this one's also very punishable. And then the third one here, he drops these guys from the sky. And this is also very, very punishable. You can see he doesn't stop like breathing heavy until all the serve bots are off the screen. So this one is also quite bad. So really his only useful super is going to be uh, this like helicopter boys one. And to me, the mark of a good joke character is that, like, their attacks aren't really, like, attacks. Like, he's not punching and kicking and, like, karate chopping you. He's chopping onions. So he could, he could, he might accidentally hit you while he's chopping up an onion. He's setting the table. You know, maybe you get hit by the tablecloth on, on your way over to the table getting set. He, he trips and falls to catch a plate. That's his sweep. We're out here peeling potatoes. <laughs> He's actually he's actually really funny, I think. They did a great job of making a character that is definitely not useful, but you know, this is a roster of 56 characters or whatever in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. They can afford to have a few that are kind of just for fun. So, Servbot, you're not gonna be winning any tournaments. Maybe unless Justin Wong is is playing and uh the other people maybe aren't using good characters as well. That that might be the only way. So uh Servbot bad character but a very very funny joke and it's always fun picking him in fun matches against your friends i'm a huge fan of the power of servbot all right and the final joke character i want to talk about it's it's not pac-man who you're seeing here although having pac-man in a fighting game is weird enough it's this guy who is that would you believe that that's mega man it's bad box art mega man from street fighter cross tech and why'd they put that guy in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, he's not a Street Fighter character or a Tekken character. Neither is Pac-Man, I guess. It's very bizarre. And, you know, I couldn't actually record any footage of this myself because, if you guys don't know, this game doesn't work anymore. Uh, games for Windows Live went down and since then you haven't been able to run the game for like seven years or whatever. On Steam, the version of the game that I have, you can't run Cross Tekken. It doesn't run. Capcom still hasn't fixed it, but for whatever reason, 
they put bad box art Mega Man in the game, and he's he's not good. He's a bad character, but he's pretty funny. It's kind of hilarious that they made a whole character based on literally the box art from Mega Man One, where he you know he doesn't even have a Buster arm. He's holding a pistol. I don't really know what they were thinking, but the the main reason why I just had to include this guy, why I think he's so notable, is because there was a very legendary glitch involving bad box art Mega Man that literally broke the game. And it was this, it was it was the goodbye world, <laughs> my planet needs me glitch, where he basically does Poochie from The Simpsons and he just pieces out. He flies so far off screen that you, it was actually kind of cool, you could see parts of the level that are normally inaccessible. You know, shout outs to Boundary Break. <laughs> you can see <laughs> way off into space, but you know, Mega Man at this point, it's like Guile in Marvel 2. Like, he's inaccessible. You're not going to be able to reach him. And uh, it pretty much just breaks the game. So it was a pretty hilarious glitch. I think they did patch this out at some point, but who's to say? Because once again, we can't play the game. So it's going to be hard for me to test this. I used to have a PS3 disc around here somewhere, but I literally looked all over my apartment and I couldn't find it. I think I must have gotten rid of it when I got tired of this game, but yeah, that's bad box art Mega Man, guys. I know there's way more joke characters out there that deserve some time to be talked about in a video like this, so if you have suggestions, I would love for you to post them down in the comments. Let me know all the characters I forgot. Who do you think belongs on the Hall of Fame of joke characters from all-time fighting games? And were there any characters on this list that were new to you that you'd never heard of? I'd love to hear it. But with that, I think we're going to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.